meeting as of October 4th. Will everybody just kind of go along with me for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, States of America to the Republic, to the Republic of which it stands, it stands one, nation, one nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice and justice for all. For all. Mr. Secretary, may I have a roll call vote for the roll call, please? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Um, Kelly Maslin or Maslin? I'm sorry. Maslin. Maslin. Yes. Here. Uh, Mr. Richard Green. Present. Mr. Bruce Cole. Present. Mr. George Carroll. And Mr. Lynn Wildblood. Present. Mr. Chair, let the record show that Mr. George Carroll is absent. We have a first description of the case, but I understand there's a um, staff report going on with this. So can I have the staff report for this first case? Sure, Mr. Chair. This is uh, Tom Drzgowski. I'm the Chief Zoning Inspector. I'll just give uh, you and the board members an update of, of where we are over the last couple months. Late last week, uh, Mr. Addis, Mr. Frank Bangs uh, met on a Zoom meeting just to kind of see where we were at in regards to ongoing discussions they're having. Um, <clears throat> I know some progress has been made on making adjustments that minimize adverse impacts uh, to neighbors. Um, what we are doing is um, I'm going to be involved over the next month. We're going to meet out on site, uh, the three of us with one or two other um, members of, of groups. We're going to kind of go over some, uh, you know, elevations and things like that. And, and so I think based on that information and on the two of them and their and their groups working together, you know, staff believes the 30-day continuance is appropriate uh, so that something can be presented um, that uh, minimizes as, as many impacts as possible and is, um, you know, um, what we're going to go for or, or probably try to work towards. So that's kind of staff's perspective. Um, on how we got to where we are and we think the additional 30 days uh, is sufficient for the two sides and, and for ultimately staff to be involved um, in, in any uh, final uh, you know process working towards um, something that can be presented to the board of adjustments. I kind of conclude my comments I can answer any questions you may have. So you're asking for a continuance until the November meeting of November 1st is that correct? And help me out on the date of the hearing. November 1st would be the first Monday. Uh, Tom. Yeah, so I would think that would be the date. Yes, that, that's correct. No, November 1. And, and I've talked to um, Mr. Bangs, Mr. Addis. Um, I, I, I mentioned that I'd write a memo. Um, I'm not sure if either one of them are on or if you'd want to hear from either one of them. Um, but I believe they're, they're both... Um, supportive of, of an additional 30 days. Um, just as a note, Tom, um, I cannot remember another situation where we've had, well, this would be the third continuance. So the sooner this can be done, the better off everybody will be one way or the other. So. Uh, I guess what I have to hear from one of the board members is a motion to approve a continuance of this case. Uh, Mr. Chairman, prior to, to a motion, this is Bruce Call. I'd like to pose a question to brother to uh, to Tom Drzgowski. Uh, Tom. Yes. Uh, in order to make sure that I'm understanding correctly here, what it sounds like in the big picture is that by virtue of meeting with those that either are initiating the request or those that are in the neighborhood that would be affected by the request, there seems to be the potential for a coming together of those minds to a solution that they would be 
they would be in agreement with. Is that is that what I'm hearing? Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Call, I'm only speaking from staff's perspective, and, and in my opinion, in my opinion only, I believe that much progress has been made between the two sides, and, and it's a testament to the neighborhood group and ultimately to Mr. Addis and the church also to understand the other side's position and um, work towards something that um, is needed and minimizes uh, the most impacts that are possible. Now, do Am I 100% sure that uh, a final product that's agreeable to all sides is going to be presented on November 1st? Maybe not. And, and, and as staff, and um, I think Nick and I, um, you know, we'll write a revised staff report that is going to propose many conditions on, on whatever's submitted. Some of them, some of the conditions we propose may not be something that the neighbors or the applicant like. Um, and, and I'm not sure we're going to be able to make everyone 100% happy, but you know we've worked with Mr. Addis, with the neighborhood group, and, and I have a good understanding of um, I think what the, the the gravest concerns are on the size, and, and, and um, we're prepared to to present something in our recommendation on, on items that have not been able to be completely resolved by the two sides and, and with our input. So let, thank you very much for that, because to me. You've outlined exactly the way that this system is supposed to work that allows for sites to come together and determine a potentially uh, acceptable solution, you know, regardless of what that might be. And by virtue of that, it, it allows us as the board to be able to see that this isn't just a my way or the highway kind of approach. That there, because almost always there are circumstances beyond what is either addressed in the code or what is addressed addressed by one side or the other, uh, the applicant or those that might be in the neighborhood. So I, I applaud the approach that you're taking. I think that is a very wise approach, and like I said, I think that is the way the system is supposed to work. And so that said, uh, I would be prepared. I would be prepared to. I mean, I will offer a, uh, a motion that the, uh, let me keep it the case number in front, but the, the, the case we're discussing, and I'll let you fill in the exact number and information, be continued for 30 days until November 1st, at which time it will be reconsidered by the Board of Adjustment. It's been moved. I'll second. And Kelly has uh, seconded. So it's been moved uh, Mr. 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 Chairman, this Mr. Is Green, Green, go ahead. Can we add that we would expect that um, when the request for the variance is presented, they also make the case for why it meets the criteria of needing a variance in terms of the hardship to the a property owner and the other criteria by which um, we approve a variance because the previous application had none of that material. I'm not quite following what you're saying. Um, all we're doing at this stage of the game is asking for a continuance. I understand, but um, in, ter in terms of what they are developing, I'm just suggesting to, as they develop their consensus, they also present a case to us next time for why they meet the criteria of deserving a variance. So um, just to be on record that that's an expectation. And Mr. Chair, if I can provide a comment, this is Tom. Go ahead, sir. And I think what Mr. Green is saying is, um, Mr. Addis, the church, they need to provide a revised, app, not, not necessarily application, but a, a write-up that outlines the criteria and the standards, the, the 12 standards that the Board of Adjustment uses in considering whether or not to grant or not grant a variance. And, and I think what Mr. Green is saying, and, and I, I'm supportive of it, is that the original submittal was very light on that material, and it's critical for the applicant to address those criteria and the justification as to why the variance is needed. I hope I'm restating that correctly, Mr. Green, but that's what I'm. Thank I'm you. Thank, 
Thank you, Tom. That's exactly what I had in mind. That was understood by me, but um, all we're voting for right now is a continuance. So it's been moved and seconded. Now, can I have the secretary do a roll call vote for the continuance? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Um, this is for continuance on case P21VA00010. Um, Kelly Ma Maslin? Aye. Uh, Mr. Richard Green? Aye. Uh, Mr. Bruce Call? Approved. And Chair Lynn Wildblood? Uh, Mr. Chair, the uh, continuance passes uh, with a vote of 4 to 0 to November 1st. Very good. There will be no public comment at this time. The public comment, anybody that's on the line right now, uh, come back next month and we'll, we'll talk about it then. Is there anything of, um, that the board wants to question staff right now for future or anything like that at this point? No, I just want to comment that I appreciate the staff doing this, doing the heavy lifting. I agree. This has been an ongoing uh, event here and trying to make everybody happy. Uh, I think it's going to work out everybody will be happy but we'll have to wait and see so is there anything as staff in the future for the next meeting other than this one piece uh, mr. chair uh, there is nothing uh, forthcoming uh, from my end I'm not sure if uh, Tom has anything on his radar but uh, nothing that from what I've seen yeah, Mr. Chair, if we haven't seen anything, uh, it, the deadline would have uh, already passed. So this will be the only case on the agenda. Um, so uh, just a reminder for anyone still on the line, no new notices will be sent out, no new postings because it's state specific. Um, and so the hearing will occur on November 1st at 1, 1 o'clock. Very good. Yeah, well, my sorry. last question relative to that, Mr. Mr. Chair, is the... Uh, uh, is this going to be again another virtual meeting? Mr. Chair, board members, at this time, um, I would it, it definitely will be virtual to be on the phone only. Um, <clears throat> what we'll be doing is we'll be monitoring the Board of Supervisors and when they re resume in person meetings, at uh, once the Board of Supervisors um, resumes in person meetings, we'll be using that as the guide and kind of using their format uh, for our boards and commissions. Uh, we plan to consistently provide the online option for any members or public who are not available or, or are uncomfortable attending in person. So we're going to continue that option too as a, as a hybrid approach once it starts. I still think we're a few months or maybe even the first of the year before I would see us back to the in-person option. So that's where we're at at this time. Okay, last comment that came to mind, this again is Bruce Cole. And that is, for these types of virtual meetings, is there actually ordinance or uh, statute that allows us to do these? Uh, or, or have we just kind of assumed that because of the COVID? And a lot of things, it seems like, have been assumed during this COVID period that are not necessarily legislatively supported. So I, I'm, I'm asking that question. Sure, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Call. I think um, I think uh, you know we've done the outreach and, and discussions internally. That's been with um, you know our uh, legal team also, and, and I believe, but I'm not 100 percent sure. I believe when the pandemic started, uh, you know, 20 months ago, or, or you know, whenever 18 months ago, that the Attorney General came out and said that. Um, um, virtual meetings meet the requirements. So um, we are comfortable with where we're at. Looking forward to resume in-person meetings at the right time. Okay, thank you. Well, if there's no other business, I would entertain a motion to adjourn this meeting. I, make I move that we adjourn. Well, there's two of them. It's been moved by Kelly and uh, Seconded by myself to uh, 
adjourn this meeting. And if that's uh, favorable to everybody, do a little roll call vote so we have everybody on record. All right. Uh, Mr. Uh, Richard Green? Approved. Uh, Ms. Kelly Maslin? Mr. Bruce Cole? Approved. And Mr. Lynn Wildblood? Approved to adjourn. Very good. Next month, we'll see everybody. And Tom, uh, thank you. Tom, if you're still on the line, would you give me a call when you get back to your office? I'm stepping into a meeting. I'm 